This year in 2024, there were a total of 27 drops for the Pop Digital lineup, also known as the Funko NFTs. I'm DK Wrestler, and in today's video, I'm going to be ranking every Funko NFT drop from the worst and work one by one until the last one where I feel is the best set overall in 2024. Let's get right to it. So starting off, what I feel is the worst set of the year, in my opinion, being Daria Series 1. Nobody asked for this set. And not only did nobody ask for this set, but this is also a set where even though packs were less than 10,000 for both standard and premium, it didn't sell out. My Little Pony Series 2. Now, I had no interest in My Little Pony at all, and jokingly, a lot of people would say, hey, let's get a Series 2, but I don't think people actually wanted a Series 2, which is why it didn't sell out. G.I. Joe Series 1. Even with packs being less than 10,000 for both standard and premium, it didn't sell out. So you can tell the lack of interest involved with the set. Batman 85th Series 1. Now, this had potential of being a pretty cool set, but it's the concept concept of the whole showing off the suits in a certain case, it was a very lackluster way of pulling off a redeemable. The only good pop in my opinion was the Alfred because it didn't follow that trend. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia Series 1. Now first off, I've never once seen an episode of this show, so a lot of personal reaction is down towards this. But almost 65% of the packs ended up being burned, which I believe is the biggest amount of packs burned to date. Star Wars Series 1. This had the potential of being one of the best sets of the year, but it ended up being very lackluster. I do like the idea of how they were really focusing on the original trilogy, but didn't like how they ended up making the pops being all deluxe pops, and there were quite a bit of them where it just felt like they were just taking a mold and making it in a deluxe form, like that Emperor Palpatine. And I also don't like the fact they wanted to make the Grail pop 1,980 pieces, which I get it, it pays homage to the year that Empire Strikes Back releases, but for a Grail pop that just uh, did, didn't sit right with me. Star Trek The Next Generation Series 1. Now, I heavily debated putting Star Wars over Star Trek, considering that I know more about Star Wars than I know about Star Trek, but I felt at least the redeemables were pretty cool, especially an updated version of Worf and Captain Picard, plus introducing a new pop with Judge Q, and I thought the royalty was much better here with Star Trek than that stupid mini-movie posters of Princess Leia for Star Wars. Fantastic Plastic Series 2. I like how small this set was was with only four redeemables, but I felt like half of the set I liked and half the set was a little bit meh, including Freddy Funko is Amazing Carlos being the best pop of the set. Squid Game Series 1. Now, I know a lot of people did have a lot of hate for this set when it first ended up getting announced and released at the beginning of the year, but I feel that it's a little bit underrated because quite a bit of pops are brand new with the set, including the grail pop of the front man being the main antagonist of the series. The only gripe I really had with this is the fact that they decided to make Freddy Funko also the front man because I didn't think we really needed two front man related pops in this set. The Disney Afternoon Series 1. This was a pretty unique concept because of how obscure the Disney Afternoon channel is within the Disney world. But I felt with the set, you got doubles of the same licensors. Like I know there was two Darkwing Duck pops, two DuckTales pops, only one Chippendale Rescues pop, and then I think Tailspin was the other redeemable. So I wish with the set that they kind of expanded the licensors within Disney Afternoon and did like one of each instead of getting multiple of the same ones. Rick and Morty Series 1. Now, I felt this was a little bit of a letdown of a set with the choices of the different redeemables. However, this set did end up selling out compared to the Disney Afternoon. Cartoon Network Series 1. This was a set that also had potential of being one of the best of the year, but the redeemables were a bit lackluster. But I do like the fact that for the most part, we got different licenses with each pop besides the fact that the ultra figure and one of the legendaries came from Samurai Jack but at the end of the day somehow this set did not sell out which is why it isn't any higher on this list. Universal Monster Series 1. This is a set that exceeded my expectations. I like how there was only four pops involved in this set and this actually ended up being a set unlike Daria and G.I. Joe where packs were under 10,000 for both standards and premiums and actually did end up selling out. Alien Series Series 1. 
Even though the set didn't end up selling out, I was really blown away by the redeemables we did get within this set. The Grail being the pilot engineer, which looked really cool. The pop of Ash, which originally I thought was just the head, but there's actually a body attached to it, which made it unique. The Ultra figure being Xenomorph that has both a glow in the dark and metallic specification, and currently as I'm recording this video, being the most expensive Ultra figure to date. And especially the unique innovation of that Freddy Fungo with chest burster, basically taking the best scene from the Alien franchise and putting it into your royalty. So there is quite a bit of bangers in here, but I think it's because this didn't sell out is why it's a little lower and not higher than it should be. Beetlejuice Series 1. Once again, unlike the Daria and G.I. Joe sets, this actually did end up selling out due to it being a big enough licensor with less than 10,000 packs for both standard and premiums, Harry Potter Series 1. Now, I thought this set was okay. I didn't really like the idea that they really based it off of one movie. Even though the set didn't sell out, this was one of those sets that kind of benefited from the idea that if packs don't sell out, then it ends up driving the price up as terms to the redeemables because there's actually less. Warner Brothers Horror Series 2. I really like the redeemables that are involved with this set and they went with some really obscure characters for this set like the accordion monkey you got the fairy man there's also some of those other legendaries that i thought were pretty cool i think the only lackluster thing in my opinion may be the freddy funko as father caress but other than that besides the fact that this set didn't sell out i thought it was a pretty decent set now i guess going into the top 10 portion starting off with funime and cosplay series one this was a pretty decent set especially introducing the very first ever mythic rarity pop in the form of the 10-inch Battle Mech Freddy. And overall, coming up with characters relating to the Freddy Funko, Franny Funko, and Proto IPs, I thought was really cool for this set, and I can't wait for a possible Series 2 to come out in 2025. Transformers Series 2. This is a set that I thought was much better than what we had for Series 1, and still introduced some new characters like RC. I think the only annoying thing is that I felt like everyone was getting that Blitzwing legendary in every single pack they were opening up. So I felt like that was kind of like the precursor to the ultra rarity because I felt like everyone was just ending up getting that redeemable. But other than that, this was definitely a top 10 set of the year. Batman 85th Series 2. I never imagined that in my bingo card that I would think that a Series 2 of a set that was so lackluster for Series 1 that released within this year would end up being way better. Especially going with the concept of villains and having them stuck in jail cells instead of what they did for series one and there were a lot of really cool pops involved with the set and introducing a new character in the form of professor pig and introducing the very first pop of franny funko relating to some sort of popular ip in the form of poison ivy i think this set would have been a little bit higher in my ranking list if it actually ended up selling out festival of fun series one and i think the redeemables are pretty decent i like the freddy funko as snowman pop being the first ever diamond collection pop. I do really enjoy the fact there's a proto as Nutcracker, but don't like the fact that it's a 10 inch figure, even though that it's a 10 inch figure because it's the mythic rarity. I also like this set because it's actually six redeemables instead of seven, like we've been seeing with two of the other Freddy Funko related IPs that also involve a mythic rarity. Space Jam Series 1. This was a really cool set and the closest thing we got to basically a Looney Tunes Series 2. And I really like the choices for the most part as terms to the redeemables, including even the Freddy Funko acting as a Toon Squad player. I think the only downer would be the Swack Hammer that was basically copying the mold of the OG pop. Stranger Things Series 2. I really enjoyed this set more than I feel like a lot of people did, especially the fact that we got new characters in the form of Yuri and Victor, but then got revamps of characters like Karen and Murray that I feel like are better than the normal ones we got in the previous sets of Stranger Things for the regular pop releases. The only downside of this is the Erica because I felt that would have obviously fit better with Series 1. TMNT Series 2. I think this is a set that we all have been wanting for quite a while ever since of course Series 1 which ended up being the first ever Funko NFT set and I think it was good to keep it at five redeemables and I like the innovation of two grails for the set. I think the only downside of this set in my opinion is that Blacklight Rocksteady but I knew that that had to be made to go along with the prior 
entire series where there was a Black Light Bebop. April Fool's Series 2. I really like this certain set considering there isn't much redeemables to go after with this set only having four redeemables. And I like the thought process of the redeemables for this set, like Poppicet Freddy being the opposite of what a Funko Pop is, where it's a big body small head instead of the big head small body. The Burning Pack basically being based off of the joke that a lot of sets recently have actually been burned, quote unquote, when the sale is over. The Chick kind of being a sequel to the egg from Series 1, where now the egg is hatched and you see a chick inside. So overall, I didn't really hate any of the redeemables, which is why it's really super high on this list. Scooby-Doo Series 2. This set is an absolute banger, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you guys actually voted this as the number one set, unlike me, which is number two. I think that going with a mostly monster set is really awesome, with a lot of fan favorite ones, including the Black Knight, which ended up being the Grail, and a really unexpected one, in my opinion, of Phantom Virus. I think, if anything, the only downer would be that Scooby-Doo Ultra figure, but that is the set that introduced the Ultra Rarity, plus this set ended up selling out, unlike a lot of the sets in 2024. And the last set being the best, in my opinion, was Funko Ween Series 2. And this set was absolutely amazing, and I pretty much had no problems with this set whatsoever. If there was a bit of a downer, it's that two-pack with Freddy and Franny, and that's only because there isn't really any detail compared to all of the other pops involved with the set. But I think making that two-pack a mythic is what makes up for how good this pop is. So even though this set is seven redeemables, they did such a great job with the set, and it makes me even more excited for what most likely is the prospect of a Series 3 in 2025. Anyways, guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed today's video of me ranking the worst of the best Funko NFT sets of 2024, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know down below on your favorite sets of 2024, and hope to see you guys in another video here on the channel. One, two, three, I'm out of here.